For millions of years, Earth wasn't a safe place to exist. It was a slaughterhouse, patrolled by predators so alien and oversized, they make movie monsters look like goldfish. These weren't your friendly neighborhood dinosaurs. They were bigger, stranger, meaner. The kind of creatures that could snap a shark in half like a breadstick, or reduce an elephant to an appetizer. The kind that bullied evolution itself, forcing life to grow armor, spikes, shells, anything, just to avoid being lunch for five more minutes. And here's the part that stings. You probably don't even know their names because time buried their bones and Hollywood swapped them out for T-Rex posters and plastic toy lines. But these weren't background players. These were the real bosses of the food chain. And once you see what they were capable of, you'll never think of T-Rex as scary again. Two million years ago, South America was in chaos. The continent had just been slammed by the Great American Interchange, when North and South finally connected, and animals from both continents spilled across the land like armies invading enemy territory. Jaguars in the South, giant sloths in the North. A biological arms race that produced some of the strangest ecosystems Earth has ever seen. And at the top of that bloody food chain stood a monster. Arctotherium and Gustadans. The short-faced bear. Except calling it a bear feels like calling Godzilla a lizard. On its hind legs, it stood 11 feet tall. It weighed over 3,000 pounds, as much as a compact car. And its claws were so long and hooked, they could turn a giant ground sloth into shredded meat in seconds. Imagine a grizzly bear, then double it. Add denser bones, bigger jaws, and the raw confidence of a creature that didn't just hunt an ecosystem. It owned it. Saber-toothed cats. Backed down. Giant armadillos the size of cars. Fair game. Nothing was safe. For decades, paleontologists assumed this monster was a pure carnivore. The ultimate killing machine. But then, the plot twist. When researchers started analyzing toothware and bone chemistry, they discovered something that broke the myth wide open. This 3,000 pound nightmare was also eating berries. Sounds ridiculous, right? A death machine stopping mid-slaughter to pick fruit. But here's the thing. Arctotherium wasn't eating plants because it had to. It was eating them because it could. This bear wasn't just the apex predator. It was the apex scavenger and the apex herbivore, all rolled into one. No animal alive today even comes close. Imagine if lions could process grass like cows, scavenge like hyenas, and still hunt like, well, lions. That's what Arctotherium was, a monopoly on survival itself. That dietary flexibility is what let it grow so impossibly big. When prey ran low, it foraged. When plants weren't enough, it hunted. When another predator made a kill, it simply stole it. It didn't specialize. It didn't compromise. It just ate everything. And for a brief window of Earth's history, that strategy worked so well that the largest carnivorous land mammal ever known walked the Earth like a tank on legs. A million years ago, Earth's oceans were a graveyard. The planet had just crawled out of the Great Dying, the single worst extinction event in history. 90% of marine life wiped off the map. Coral reefs gone. Entire lineages erased. It was a blank canvas. And evolution doesn't waste a blank canvas. Out of that silence, something new appeared. Something so perfectly engineered for killing that paleontologists gave it a name straight out of mythology. Thalatoarchon saurophagus, the ruler of the sea that eats lizards. Picture an ocean predator almost 30 feet long, the size of a school bus, with jaws built not to nibble fish, but to carve through other marine reptiles its own size. Think about that. Modern sharks don't do this. Even great whites go after seals, fish, or smaller sharks. But Thalatoarchon, it was going after equals. This wasn't feeding, it was open warfare. The fossil evidence makes it even creepier. 
rows of bladed teeth, not just for piercing, but for slicing flesh into strips. Skeletons found oriented in the same direction, hinting they may have hunted in packs, like orcas on steroids. Imagine half a dozen 30-foot reptiles moving in formation, tearing through an ocean that had only just recovered from apocalypse. And here's the kicker. This monster evolved only 8 million years after the extinction. In evolutionary terms, that's instant. Life went from nearly erased to creating a predator that rewrote the rules of the sea in less than 10 million years. But for all its dominance, Thalatoarchon left behind no heirs, no evolutionary dynasty. It came, it ruled, and then it vanished. A dead end. And that's what makes it so unsettling. Even a predator, this advanced, this unstoppable, can disappear overnight. The oceans moved on. Evolution kept writing, and something even stranger was coming. A million years ago, the oceans didn't look like ours. No fish, no whales, not even sharks. Just soft-bodied oddities drifting in a world that had only recently figured out what complex life even meant. And then something appeared that changed everything. Anomalocaris canadensis, the weird shrimp. Which is possibly the most insulting nickname ever given to the first true apex predator in Earth's history. It wasn't huge, maybe a meter long, but at a time when most animals were smaller than your finger, this thing was a leviathan. Two massive spiny arms reached out from its head like alien grappling hooks, snapping prey with precision. Its compound eyes were the size of dinner plates, the best vision on Earth at the time, and its body moved with fluid strokes, more like a submarine than a worm or jellyfish. This was no passive drifter. This was a hunter, the first of its kind. And once Anomalocaris showed up, the game was over. For the first time in history, Prey had to evolve defenses. Shells got thicker. Camouflage became crucial. Survival meant adapting fast or becoming lunch. In other words, Anomalocaris didn't just hunt creatures. It hunted the entire biosphere into evolving. But like all trailblazers, it eventually got outcompeted by predators that built on its blueprint. Better armor, better jaws, more specialized weapons. The weird shrimp sparked an evolutionary arms race that would echo for hundreds of millions of years. Even if it didn't live long enough to see the chaos it unleashed. Still, its legacy is terrifyingly clear. The Cambrian explosion wasn't just life experimenting with new forms. It was life suddenly realizing one brutal truth. Predators exist now. Fast forward to the Jurassic Seas. For over 100 million years, one group of predators ruled with absolute authority, the pliosaurs. Forget the long-necked plesiosaurs you've seen in Loch Ness monster documentaries. Pliosaurs were their short-necked, heavyweight cousins. Think less graceful swan and more torpedo with teeth. Take Pliosaurus funke, nicknamed Predator X when it was discovered in the Arctic. The name wasn't exaggeration. 40 feet long, skull longer than a man, and a bite force estimated at 50,000 pounds per square inch. That's 10 times a T-Rex, four times anything alive today. A force so violent it could turn bone into splinters before the prey even realized it was dead. But raw power wasn't enough. Pliosaurs were fast, streamlined bodies, four flippers that acted like high-speed propellers. They could go from drifting silence to ramming speed in seconds. Imagine a torpedo, but alive, with the intelligence to hunt. And they weren't one-trick monsters. Some species evolved long, narrow jaws to snatch fast fish. Others built thick skulls to crush armored prey. Some went full generalist, taking down anything from small sharks to reptiles nearly their own size. For over a hundred million years, they filled every possible predatory niche in the oceans. Yet somehow, they're almost forgotten, overshadowed by the wrong relatives. 
everyone knows the myth of the elegant long-necked plesiosaur. Almost no one knows that the real apex predators of those seas were the pliosaurs, which feels like history's cruelest joke. It's like remembering sauropods, but forgetting T-Rex. But if pliosaurs dominated the oceans, something even stranger was happening in the skies, and it would create the single largest flying predator the planet has ever seen. Picture this, you're walking across a late Cretaceous floodplain. The air is hot, the ground cracks under your feet, and then the shadow hits you. It isn't a cloud, it's wings. Quetzalcoatlus Northropi, the largest flying animal in the history of the planet. Wingspan, 40 feet, wider than a city bus. Height, as tall as a giraffe when it stood on the ground. Weight, light enough to fly, but heavy enough to snap your spine if it landed on you. Most people imagine pterosaurs as small bat-like reptiles fluttering around the dinosaurs. Quetzalcoatlus was not that. This was a skyscraper with wings, and somehow it flew. Its bones were hollow, honeycombed with air sacs for strength without weight. Its wing membranes stretched like living sails, and once it caught a thermal, it could soar for hours without a single flap, gliding over entire ecosystems like a silent executioner. But here's the nightmare part. Quetzalcoatlus wasn't just an aerial predator, it hunted on the ground too. It stalked like a stork on legs taller than a man, then drove its beak, longer than a canoe paddle, straight down like a spear. One strike, and smaller dinosaurs didn't stand a chance. Think about it. The largest flying creature of all time wasn't some fragile glider. It was a land-hunting, sky-dominating, physics-defying apex predator. Evolution had pushed flight to its absolute limit. And it created a monster that blotted out the sun. So what do a berry-eating bear, a sea reptile warlord, an alien shrimp, a living torpedo, and a flying skyscraper all have in common? They were the real giants. The predators that rewrote ecosystems, forced evolution into new directions, and then vanished into extinction before most of us even knew their names. And that's the strange irony. The most terrifying predators in Earth's history aren't the ones plastered on lunchboxes or starring in blockbuster films. They're the ones hidden away in research papers, locked in museum drawers, or overshadowed by prettier cousins. But once you've seen them, once you know what they were capable of, you realize how fragile the spotlight really is. T-Rex might be Hollywood's king, but in the fossil record, it was just one act in a much bigger, much scarier show. Because the history of life on Earth isn't about who was the most famous, it's about who survived long enough to shape the world, and who left behind bones sharp enough to remind us how brutal nature really is. And these forgotten titans, they were nature at its most brutal. Thanks for watching. Until next time, dead curious.